Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Movie News. This is AMC Spoilers, the show where we review a movie and warning, as the title suggests, we are giving away spoilers in this show. So you are only permitted to watch this episode of AMC Spoilers, which is about the Lego movie, if you've already seen the Lego movie, because we're going to talk about details and all the spoilers in it. Because basically what this is, this show is the conversation between friends that we've all seen the movie together, and now we're going to talk about the movie together. So you have been warned. Lots of spoilers in this episode. Like I said, we're talking about the movie, The Lego Movie. Now joining me today to discuss this starting way over there is Chris Lee Kennedy, Mr. Dennis Zen, Aaron Darling, and Ashley Mova, and of course myself. So guys, let's start talking about Lego. Chris Lee, we'll start over with you. Let's all go over first no of all. No pressure. Yeah, we'll <laughs> talk about... The positives. Let's talk about the positive things about this new movie, Lego. Let's start with you. I, 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 the only thing I can say is that it was perfection on a lot of different levels. It gave me exactly what I wanted as an adult. It gave a great entertainment for kids. And I also think that there was a, a great story for both adults and kids to enjoy. So I have nothing wrong with this film. I think it was perfect. Dennis, some of your positives. Oh, uh, I, I thought it was fun, funny, charming. Uh, animation was great. Uh, I, I actually think it's actually more, it's, it, it's a movie that's disguised as a kid's film that's really for adults. Because there's a lot of humor in there that's, that only like teenagers and above are going to get. So I, I think it's excellent. Best movie of the year that I've seen so far. Aaron? It's only February, so uh, <laughs> hold on to your horses, Dennis. <laughs> I like this movie a lot. I thought it was very smart. The comedy was clean, but also very entertaining, um, well-paced. I would almost say uh, relentlessly <laughs> entertaining. It just kept going and uh, pushing along in a way that was really easy to enjoy. And I love pretty much all of the actors and <laughs> their jobs <laughs> voicing these Legos. It was amazing to see that. Right. Ashley, your positives? I thought the casting for the voices was so spot on. I couldn't have thought of anyone better to act as these characters. Will Ferrell, obsessed with Will Ferrell. <laughs> and the amount of detail that they gave with the shower was Legos. Like, the water was Legos. I never would have even thought of to do that. So I thought that was really awesome. You know, you pointed out the voice acting. I'm one of these guys where I don't, generally, I don't care who the voice, like, I don't feel like you need to get celebrities to do voice acting. Go get real voice actors. I cannot imagine this movie without Chris Pratt voicing Emmett. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so Chris Pratt. Like, he, he <laughs> inhabited that, that character. It was so amazing. The animation, I sometimes forgot that it was animated and not stop motion. Mm -hmm. They yeah. simulated the movement of Legos so perfectly mm -hmm. from the way they would walk and mm -hmm. the stiffness and... It, you, you had to remind yourself, this isn't stop motion, this is actually animated. Incredible. One of the points for me is going to be a positive and a negative, but I'll get to the negative part in a second. But you mentioned the pacing, Aaron. When I came out, because I saw it with Dennis when I saw it for the mm -hmm. first time, and when I came out, the, word, all, the only word I could have in my head was frantic. The right. pacing of this movie is frantic. Yeah. Right. There is always... 50 things happening on screen to look at and listen to all the same time and it never pauses for you for for you for a second to ingest it and let mm -hmm. it settle it's because the next second has 50 more things and the next second is and it just is all coming at you like this big crashing wave and it makes the movie feel like it's 15 minutes long because mm -hmm. it just it moves at this incredible pace and i can't even remember half the great things about the movie because Something great and funny would happen, but two seconds later, another great funny thing happens, and I've totally forgotten about what happened before it. So I thought, <clears throat> and, and, this is one of the best directed films I've seen in a while. This movie is all Lord, and what's the other guy? Uh, Chris Miller and Phil Lord. Miller and Phil Lord. This is all them, the same directors who gave us uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and 21 Jump Street, uh, same directors who did Lego Movie. This is all them. Like, the, from everything, from the way every scene is shot to the, to the dialogue and the pacing. And the, it's just a great mixture of emotion and comedy and nostalgia and all of this kind of rolled into one. I will agree with Dennis that, well, yes, it is very early in the year. <laughs> I have a very hard time envisioning 
that the Lego movie is not going to end up in my top 10 favorite movies of the year. If 10 more movies come out this year that I enjoy more than Lego movie, this is going to be one hell of a year for movies. So, um, yeah, that's just a, a few of my positives. So, Chris Lee, let's start back down on your end again. Try to – what thing – now, you said you had nothing negative to say about it. What was the one thing that you think was maybe a 9 out of 10? What was something that you think maybe could have been done a little bit better? I actually don't have a negative, and it's funny because I, maybe it's the ADHD in me or maybe <laughs> it's the inner 4-year-old, but I loved that nonstop constant pacing and the constant change because it kept my – my entertainment I just couldn't stop laughing and I feel like because it is geared towards kids as much as the adults are going to love it kids need that constant change mm -hmm. <laughs> so I I really can't find a negative Dennis what would you think Maybe would have longer? to be improved about it, it to be uh, I think my only and it's a really tiny negative is also from what I was saying was positive is I actually think it really is more for for older people because uh, you know there was a lot of jokes in there that like I, I just walked in there to catch the last 15 minutes before we did the review and they do you know the Batman joke at the end he's the hero you deserve oh, or whatever. oh yeah look, what, how, all no the all the adults that. are laughing none of the kids no kids He's were the laughing. Boyfriend you deserve. So I felt like there was a lot of that, and I almost feel like it's less of a kids movie and more for you know people like us. Aaron, Batman, what a jerk, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was. Great. Um, I had a couple of things that annoyed me. One of them being the "Everything Is Awesome" song because it's like the song that never ends. You hear it a million times, and you walk out of the theater singing it, annoying everyone in your presence. Second thing, I kept wanting to call the Craggle a Kegel. And yep, that yep. is personally a problem <laughs> for me. I'm like, oh are you guys remember the part with the kegel? No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Ashley? <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, I love the movie, and it was obviously very awesome. But I thought that there were a few parts in the movie where I thought it was about to end. I thought he was going to save the day, and this is the end, and we're all going to go home happy. But then it came back about three or four times where I expected him to save the day, and I expected the movie to end, but it continued on. Like, the story continued on. So I almost thought it could have been a little bit shorter because the story <laughs> in the middle, I love the ending, but the story in the middle, I felt like it was about to end about, like, three or four times. Uh, I, I, like, I got a stretch here for negatives, mm. uh, which is going to what I said was a positive, the frantic pacing. I do think the one thing Miller and Lord could have done was given us some strategic pauses to let some of the really cool stuff sink in. Um, and, and they started to do that near the end once they started going into the real world and back because when they flipped into the real world things slowed down a bit mm -hmm. and they, it, they let you marinate in it and I thought that was really good but I thought the main body of the movie probably could have benefited from that as well a little bit um, the other negative that I would say is no I got nothing I mean that, that's, <laughs> that's it I mean is it is I thought with well, the pacing while being amazing maybe could have been a little bit too amazing and they could have paused it a few times here and there um, so, so that would have been good, but, but other than that, I, I just, I can't, I can't say there's other things that stand out to me as a negative about this movie. Let's talk about some of our p favorite parts in the film then, uh, and what stands out to you. And I want to bring this part up, because I don't know if anybody else has thought about this. Near the end of the film, all right, by the end of the movie, you're almost thinking that this movie is actually all in the imagination of Will Ferrell's son. Right. That's how they kind of set it up, that this is actually just his game um, coming to life, how, mm -hmm. we see, how we perceive this game that he's actually playing. This is just an imagination. Except for one thing. There is a supernatural element to this movie. Will Ferrell, when in the real world, remember this? He's sitting at his desk trying to fix something, and the Emmett Lego is coming to life. It's actually alive. It moves on its own. And that is a complete paradigm shift because it goes from, okay, this whole movie that we've been watching, this is just actually the expressive game that the kid is playing. But wait a minute. No, it's not. Because that little, I almost swore, um, <laughs> <laughs> that little toy is actually coming to life mm. and it doesn't address it. So I don't know if you guys noticed that, but like, how do you reconcile that with the rest of the movie? I, I can't think of how to, how to reconcile other than these toys were actually alive. I, I, I don't know. Like, how do you explain I that? almost thought, like, his power was so strong, it was, like, coming into the real world because he wanted, <coughs> you know, his power was so overwhelming that his toy was actually starting to shake into the real world. I, 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't have a better explanation, yeah. do you guys? No. My Legos were totally real. I <laughs> have yours. Good My point. Legos had conversations. Point. They built things. They destructed things. So, I mean, I totally expected Emmett to be real. Yeah. I don't Although know. that one part kind of breaks the continuity in terms of how we're supposed to see the movie, I still think it's all about the kid and how he views the world. And it's kind of beautiful, actually. It's a little touching Aww. moment. Oh, yeah. It, you know, all about his, his relationship with his dad and how that affects him and how he sees everything around him. And it's so funny how these characters reflect different people people in his life. You know what the funny thing is? When, when Will Ferrell comes down to because we are in a generation where we are going to be Will Ferrell's, Will Ferrell's character. We're going to be the first generation that we have more toys than our kids. And when <laughs> I say toys, I mean toys. I don't mean the 60-inch TV toy. I mean the Millennium Falcon is hanging <laughs> from my <laughs> office roof, right? And all I could picture was myself. I don't have any kids right now, but all I could picture is myself having a kid and them coming to my room where I have my Star Wars toys. And I could totally relate with Will Ferrell's characters. I'll be like, don't touch that X-Wing. Don't oh my touch gosh. my all-metal collector's edition of Optimus Prime. Don't touch it. But it's like they're toys and they're meant to be played. I thought that ending had so much heart. It did. It did. And also, <laughs> I feel like that ending was kind of a subliminal Warner Brothers precursor to Batman versus Superman because does Finn not look like a little Jesse Eisenberg? And is Lord <laughs> Business not a metaphor for Lex Luthor? Is this not the kid who's going to grow up to be his father and become the head of LexCorp? Just break down the world. <laughs> I admire your enthusiasm. I think you're looking into it a little bit. Yes. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> the first thing I, I thought of. <laughs> I think WB is just happy about the buttloads of money that are coming right. from this movie. I mean, it made almost $70 million this weekend. Wow. And it's just going to keep on going. And the fact that it brought Legos back to, to children. I mean, I was yeah. a nanny for a long time. And when I was a kid, we, we lived with Legos. We had all those sets. Like, seeing those pictures come through of all the different Lego sets brought back so many great memories for me. And kids don't play with Legos anymore because they have their iPads. They're on their parents' computers. You know, everything technology-wise has gone so much further. So they're not playing with Legos. And this made Legos really cool. Like, I wanted to go out to the toy store and buy a container of Legos last night. One of the funniest conversations coming out of the movie, uh, because this, who did the voice of the astronaut again? I keep, I keep uh, Charlie talking. Day. Charlie Day. The astronaut character, his helmet piece here is broken mm -hmm. in the movie. And I remember Ann and Dennis yes. talking about that because they both had that Lego and it was the same, it would always break this. Yes. <laughs> that break was always there. And I guess it became so normal that they actually put that into the movie. Um, I want to get some of our favorite moments. One of my favorite moments in this movie, obvious because of who I am, the Star Wars cameo. Yeah. When course. the Millennium Weird. Falcon shows up. And at first, when they popped up and they were about to start talking, I thought, oh, I wonder who they've got to do. I don't remember reading in the credits who does uh, Han Solo's voice. That was Harrison Ford. That was Harrison Ford. That was Anthony Daniels doing mm -hmm. C-3PO's mm -hmm. voice. That was Colt 45, uh, Billy, D. Billy William. D. Williams doing the voice of Lando Calrissian. I just about choked. I was laughing so hard. And, that was, and the line that Batman gives when he turns to Wild Style, and he says, look, it's just really important for our relationship that you understand that I should be allowed to go out and party with totally strangers <laughs> whenever I want. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. And then when it came out, I gave that line to Anne, and she didn't buy it as much. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> that was hilarious. I mean, what are some of your favorite moments? I mean, that was one of my favorite moments as well. But that's a perfect example of where adults are going to get that joke right. versus the yes. kids. Right. Kids yes. are not going to understand that at all. And we're like, oh, my God, that's real life, you know? I love the part when Vitruvius comes back as a ghost. Oh, yeah. Ghost oh, Lego. my gosh. That was I so funny. I lost it. I was laughing so hard. I also love the fact that the Skeletrons look like the exoskeleton of um, Lord Zed. I thought oh, from yeah, Power Rangers, did, did they, a little yes. Power Rangers reference in there. Um, I also loved the scene when the ocean, when they're in the ocean and the movement and the animation oh, yeah. of the oh, water. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh, so fascinating. I wish we got to see a little bit more of that world and see some time right. on the top view of the ocean and all the debris in there that was incredible i really love the wordplay we were just talking about oh, this yeah. the you know nile polish remover and the, the q tie <laughs> i think another thing that the adults would only get that exact, I zero. Get. exact zero exact zero craigle it was eagle craigle um <laughs> yeah i love the wordplay in that movie it was so great
What were some of your favorite moments, Chris Lee? I, so I was just going to say those are some of my favorite moments as well. The, when, when they brought in the human elements to the world, mm-hmm. which made you realize that this was really happening because they had, you know, the Band-Aid, which they called right. the Cloak of Band-Aid. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there were just some Band-Aid. really great moments of, of, of things like that where you knew that this was going to be bigger than just a Lego movie. Um, and also, like, who would have thought chewing gum could take down Superman? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Colby Smolders as Wonder Woman rumors were true because she's <laughs> Wonder Woman in the Lego movie. I mean, there were some really fun moments just as a fan of of Legos and then of all the superhero characters. I mean, Jonah Hill as Green Lantern. First of all, the fact that they made Green Lantern annoying is hysterical <laughs> yeah. and made me so happy. And I also love that they kind of made Batman a jerk. Like, they kind of played a little bit and I had fun with but that. But they didn't go too jerk. Like that one scene I mentioned when he ditches her to go off with the Star Wars guys, it was actually just him getting the power cord. The hyperdrive, yeah. The yeah. hyperdrive to come back. And that scene was so well played because after he leaves with them, they're doing the stereotypical Hollywood thing where, you know, the girl's been spurned by the jerk and the hero comes in. It's like, you know what? You deserve so much better than that. And he comes right back. <laughs> right. The timing of that scene was so good. But also the that whole thing, I don't know why I laughed myself silly because I didn't hear anybody else in the audience laughing nearly as hard. <laughs> but I was like leaning forward in my seat when Superman is captured and they put him in that little pod and he goes, this is awful. The only thing that would make it worse is and the camera gets wider and he's right beside Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. We're like, roommates! We're roommates! Hey, how cool is Oh, does anybody have some kryptonite? Like, I thought that was hilarious. And every, like I think three different points in the movie, she says her name is Wild Style and as soon as she does, somebody has to ask, are you a DJ? Amazing. Like, I just thought that was good. It, 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 anyway, some other ones before we the give The astronaut her. that just towards the end of the movie was just kept yelling every, like something would be happening and all of a sudden you'd hear spaceship. Yeah. And then spaceship. something else would happen spaceship. and it would be spaceship. Like that was, I could not, like I was giggling like a little girl. I also really liked the song that Batman wrote for Wild Style about being an orphan. Uh, what's it oh. called? Untitled. Uh, <laughs> it's called Untitled. Uh, biography or something, something like that. Something like that. It was just dark. I <laughs> laughed so hard. About no being an orphan. <laughs> I really loved um, Unikitty. I have an obsession oh with her. Oh my gosh, yeah. She was so cute. I think they should make a Unikitty movie. Needless to say, it'd probably be the only one in the theater, but I think it's really worth it. I love Alison Brie, I think her name yeah. is, mm-hmm. from, uh, she was in Community. Community. Perfect, perfect voice for that. It was so cute. It was adorable. And Liam Neeson as good cop, right. bad cop. Get off my train. <laughs> that, I, the thing that made me laugh the hardest, we were just talking about this before we started shooting the show, was imagining Liam Neeson in the sound booth recording his voice for this when he was doing the voice of good cop. Hey, buddy, want some <laughs> coffee? Like, I'm just picturing Liam Neeson doing that voice, and it just... That would crack me up every single time. But yeah, that Vesuvius ghost thing on the string and everything. Yeah, that, so good. See, I think that's also another <laughs> example of where the adults will find it much funnier than the kids because the adults see like, okay, they're just purposely making this ghetto looking ghost <laughs> with a string. And it's kind of just funny in the sense that this is a multi-million dollar thing and that's purposely done, you know? But if you channel your inner three-year-old, <laughs> you would know that that's what you would do to make the ghost yep. come through yeah. the Legoland. So but they would just assume Oh, Could that's just, just normal, like, and then we see it as like, oh, that's hilarious because they're bringing it back. Yeah, I. Oh, to one of one of my favorite things was right near the beginning when Emmett is starting his day and is reading through the instructions about how to do your day, combing your hair. Remember, he had the Lego, whatever. Then he does the comb, and he's got the straight hair. But yeah. the part where it says, "Okay, part six, spend some quality time with your loved ones," and it's just him sitting on the couch alone Aww. with his plant. Felt so bad. Wasn't that? Also, so in the instructions, I love that he did the jumping jacks like this way versus oh, yeah, that way because like the this. Legos, like, just so, so spot on the with the detail, way they though, mm-hmm. yeah. in everything. Like, right. as one of you guys mentioned, like, even the water coming out was mm-hmm. Lego blocks, and like, just every little piece of detail was just mind blowingly accurate and beautiful. Uh, it is one of the most gorgeous animated films, for at least as far as 3D animation goes. Um, that I've seen in a maybe ever. I mean, it was just gorgeous. Yeah, the scene where um, you go from Emmett's little world inside of his apartment and it pulls out and you start to see the whole city that they yeah. live in is astounding. And I know for you it was a negative, but everything is awesome. No. <laughs> Best song ever. No. It is so no. 
good. Mm-hmm. Everything is cool so when you're good. part of a team. <laughs> now, did any of you stay for the for the credits and listen yeah. to the, to yes. all the lyrics and the, with so, the rapping? Yeah, <laughs> there's a rapping a- after. Yeah, I I like the song. I think it's 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 one of those. It's annoying but catchy at the same time. Things. Yes. You have to love it. Yeah, I've got friends that are like that. As well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's let's then get to our overall impressions. Let's wrap this up. Our overall impressions, wrapping up our thoughts. Chris Lee, we'll start with you. No pressure. Um, mm-hmm. I, oh, I, and, and also give it a, a score out of ten. Oh, okay. Well, I loved it. Um, I recently visited the Lego store when I was in New York and to see the cities and the things that they have built there just to kind of walk by and see and then to see it in this film with movement and all the different areas it brought it to life in a way that I did not think was possible with Legos Um, and I loved the story I loved that it was teaching kids really valuable lessons in a really fun way but in a way that adults can go and have fun because a lot of kids movies sometimes you know adults aren't going to have fun with and this is something that they can both enjoy um, so I would give it a 9 out of 10. You know, uh, before I forget, I, because I forgot to mention something, I'm so glad you brought it up. The lesson for kids in it, you expected at first the lesson to be um, don't follow the instructions, don't follow the rules. Mm-hmm. But, the, but it actually has a double meaning. Throughout the film, it's, they teach that, hey, there, is, there are times to don't just do follow the instructions. Don't just do what, what you think it is your, that everybody else does. But... In the movie, they also teach kids. You know what? Sometimes you have to. It, it following the rules, following the instructions, is the right thing to do, and blah blah blah. And, and I like that they did both being those special. sides. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think I think in in this kind of society where we're dealing with bullying nonstop, and and kids to see kind of fun little innuendos in movies like this that you're all special in your own way you all have a purpose we're all trying to do something and it went back to in real world with the dad and the son where it showed there that they both had to kind of find something that worked within both of them um until they announced the sister coming in but yeah dennis your overall impressions in your school yeah i I thought the movie was fantastic and it's it's totally funny it's it's worth seeing it several times i've already seen it twice i'll probably see it three or four times and, and like I've been saying before, I do think it's actually geared more towards adults than kids. And and uh, if if you happen to be if you aren't a parent and you don't have any kids, you know I I would suggest going to a later showing with mo- more adults. I think you'll enjoy it that more that way. Aaron, I thought it was sweet, charming, so entertaining, and I love the skeletons and the <laughs> Vitruvius ghost coming back. Um, I would probably give this one an eight out of ten. I was really pleased with it. Ashley. Um, I liked it a lot. I thought it was extremely witty, really, really funny. I love the cast. Um, but I I really, really did like it. But I feel like the hype of the movie almost like made me expect this amazing best movie Life in the entire changing. universe. Mm. Um, and I don't think it was the best movie in the entire universe. I wanted it to be so bad, but needless to say, I still really enjoyed it. I laughed a lot. Um, so I'm going to give it like a seven and a little half Z. So seven and a half. Seven and a little half Z. <laughs> um, I agree with Des. I, this is not a kid's film, much like Pixar movies. This is a kid-friendly film. Uh, and that's why I describe a lot of Pixar films aren't kids' films. They're kid-friendly, but they're really f- for the adults to enjoy more. And I, I, th- I felt the same way about this. I can't remember the last time I was just so thoroughly entertained. I, honestly, I don't think I've been this thoroughly entertained watching a film since I, I saw Avengers for the first time. Um, wow. And trust me, coming from me, that's high praise because <laughs> everybody knows so much I like Avengers. Um, it, it was beautifully done. Gorgeously shot, brilliantly directed, extremely funny. Uh, the music was catchy. I've listened to the Batman song about eight <laughs> times at home because I found it. I found it. Uh, they of released it. Of course you did. Um, wow. They released it. And you can just listen to the song, and I just doo, 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 no parents, super rich. Anyway, can you perform um, that later on the show? I think I will. I think okay. I move talk tomorrow. Perfect. I will perform the song. Um, just yeah. Wow. And and I'm I'm gonna have to give it a nine. I just was that thoroughly entertained by it. So uh, I, we all liked it, some more than others, um, but overall it's, it's a positive across the board. Listen, don't wait to see this movie. Go see it. Um, head on over to www.amctheaters.com right now for your theater showtime and movie ticket information. Uh, if you're watching the show and you're not a subscriber to our AMC Movie News channel, 
take a second and just click subscribe. It'll keep you up to date on all of our videos with all the latest movie news, our daily AMC movie talk show, our weekend AMC mailbag show, AMC spoilers, AMC versus, AMC coming soon. We've got a lot of stuff going on on our AMC movie news YouTube channel. Subscribe and uh, keep up to date. I want to thank the people who are joining me. First of all, Chris Lee Kennedy. Chris Lee, thanks for being here. Everything is awesome. <laughs> Dennis Zen. Thanks for having me on the show. Miss Erin Darling. Thank you for having me. Ashley Mova doing her first thing with us that's not just Woo! hosting. Thanks, guys. Don't be too hard on me, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and thank you, guys. Thanks, Ray, for, uh, for uh, editing the show as we're doing this. And thank you for joining us. Uh, check us out again next time. We'll have another spoilers episode up pretty soon. We'll let you know which movie that's going to be. So until next time, my name is John Campy for AMC Movie News. And until then, bye-bye. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.